most people's first impression of Ukraine is that it's a country full of beautiful women. However, they don't know much about the local food culture. Even in the gourmet metropolis that is Hong Kong, there are only a handful of Ukrainian restaurants. Ukraine is a vast Eastern European nation with bountiful resources. It's bordered by the Black Sea to the south and Russia to the east. Belarus lies to its north, while its western neighbors include countries such as Poland, Slovakia, Hungary, and Romania. Ukrainian and Russian food culture share a number of similarities due to the country's geographical proximity. The cuisine has very strong Eastern European characteristics, with borscht being one of the better known dishes among Hong Kongers. Today, the gorgeous Ukrainian chef, Oksana, will show us how authentic borscht is made. Today we're gonna cook Ukrainian borscht, so it's a beet soup. Uh, let's do the topping first. So we need cabbage, potato, onion, carrots, garlic, and the beetroot. vegetables is very important in, in Ukrainian cuisine since it's uh, uh, the climate in Ukraine is very different than Hong Kong it's very cold in Ukraine so that's why we have to use a lot of root vegetables not the fresh vegetables this is traditional cut that's how we cut the vegetable for the soup um, so mostly it's uh, small pieces not the big chunks so you can uh, just easily eat and enjoy all the vegetables. So after chopping all ingredients, we have to add some of them into the boiling water. Then we need to cook for 10 minutes. While our vegetables is cooking, we start to prepare the sauce. So we need some sunflower oil, just put into the pan, since very popular. In Ukraine, we, like in Italy, it's olive oil. Then we need some tomato sauce oh my god some salt some black pepper and the bay leaf mix it well and stir for five minutes Okay. So now we add our remaining ingredients into our soup. So which is the cabbage. And then the main one is beetroot. Then we add um, uh, butter beans to our soup as well. And our sauce. Mix it very well. We need to boil this soup for another 15 minutes. The main ingredients of this soup is the beetroot. So the color and flavor it's from the beetroot, not from the tomatoes. So tomatoes is just a um, supporting uh, vegetable for the sauce. Okay. Let's check our brush. Hmm. This looks very nice, rich and flavorful. We can eat all vegetables with the broth. Some people like to eat with meat, but we create this vegetarian option um, just for Hong Kong, I think, because it's very light and flavorful at the same time. Mm -hmm. 
Oksana and her younger sister Olena settled in Hong Kong one after the other more than a decade ago. The biggest incentive being that Hong Kong gave them a sense of security. Ukraine is mired in long-standing turmoil and has a relatively high crime rate. Olena can't help but get somewhat anxious when recalling her life there back then. However, she now feels at ease when going out in Hong Kong. Although Hong Kong is a dazzling metropolis, she doesn't find it chaotic. It has a convenient transportation system and is very safe. She's surprised that conflicts rarely arise in such a densely populated place. Olena is amazed and impressed by how most people treat others with courtesy and accommodate one another. Actually, it was surprising. Even now, every time I walk and I feel so grateful, I say that thank you, Hong Kong, for allow us to come and feel like home. It was really welcoming experience. I didn't feel the odd one out or any in any way, actually, because it's everything by so convenient and so open, and um, I, I feel like I'm welcome here. We do lots of hiking, actually, because it's so beautiful to climb up the peak and see, see Hong Kong on your, uh, on your palm. It's, it's just beautiful to do the hike or um, go to the beach with the children and anything really possible in Hong Kong. Yeah, I do lots of sports in uh, Hong Kong. So. Um, like dragon boating I did for a couple of years with all my friends. I do enjoy hikes as well and I think uh, lately I enjoy hikes on my own. It's a very good opportunity to recall and think and maybe uh, just think about my future plans or um, maybe in other dishes or whatever I have to do. It's give me some time to be and think and just um, enjoy surroundings in very quiet atmosphere and a beautiful surroundings. Um, it's give me like a lots of energy and uh, inspirations, I would say. Even though the Ukrainian sisters love their life in Hong Kong, They've insisted on delivering the authentic taste of home all these years, in hopes of introducing Ukrainian food culture to Hong Kong. The first problem they had to tackle was the lack of variety in Ukrainian ingredients in Hong Kong. Consequently, they started small by opening an online shop selling Eastern European products imported from places such as their home country, Russia and Georgia. Among them are buckwheat and sour cream two widely popular ingredients in Ukraine that are eaten at almost every meal. Basically, sour cream, we eat with everything. We eat with dumplings, we eat with soups, we eat with the potatoes, we eat with cabbage rolls, we use for the cakes. We just love sour cream. It's the, I think it's the um, sauce, num sauce number one in Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> because it's sour and creamy at the same time, so it will really enhance the flavor of any dish. That's what I feel. It's really bring the dish to life. I think it's traditions. It's just the, you know, um, we just love our, our sour cream with everything because it just um, make dish so, so tender and so light at the same time I give it this extra flavor from the sourness and the milky taste. Buckwheat uh, play a very important uh, I think role in our cuisine. It's uh, the cereal we eat um, like in Hong Kong is the rice so back in Ukraine we eat buckwheat. So nowadays it's very popular uh, ingredient cereal just because it's um, gluten-free and uh, it's also full of uh, uh, vitamins and minerals, so it's very beneficial for the health. 
we have some dishes in the, on the menu and Hong Kong people like to try what it is and uh, uh, and some of the shops in Hong Kong start to order from us I think Hong Kong took it very well because they try they want to be as close to our cuisine as possible and given buckwheat bean like we call it Russian rice it's our staple food we could eat it every day it's sweet way or savory way or even in dessert so that's why to introduce this taste is very important so they will really connect to our taste To acquaint more Hong Kongers with Ukrainian cuisine, the sisters decided to expand their business in 2016 by opening a physical store and restaurant in Central. Every brick and tile in this restaurant embodies their dreams and their love for their home, be it the floral wallpaper, flower arrangements, or the dim lighting, every detail evokes the feeling of home. It's as if one has been transported to a European country house. So you can feel the vibe and atmosphere here and the many things we brought back from home from our house in Ukraine like the pictures and photographs or some dishes um, so it's keep uh, it gives this extra energy to everybody and remind us where we are and where we are from and uh, yeah, it makes this place extra special for everybody. Apart from having a cozy atmosphere, the restaurant must also serve authentic dishes. The sisters admit that running a restaurant in Hong Kong is no easy feat. However, they're reluctant to cater to the local palate for the sake of increasing their customer base. They'd rather work hard on creating new dishes to attract diners. The restaurant specializes in home-style cuisine. Most of the dishes do not contain a lot of animal protein. They're easy on the palate and tend to be light instead of greasy. Much emphasis is put on precision in terms of preparation and timing. The slightest error can ruin the taste of a dish. Oksana doesn't keep her skills to herself. She holds classes to teach others in her spare time and even uploads cooking videos of traditional dishes to the internet for people who are interested in learning how to cook Ukrainian cuisine. These blinis, for example, are different from the sweet pancakes that we usually eat. They're most commonly eaten with savory ingredients such as salmon caviar. First, the egg, milk, and water are mixed. Oil, sugar, vanilla, salt, and flour are then added for further mixing. After resting for 20 minutes, the batter is fried in an oiled pan. There are also these potato dumplings. They're made in a similar fashion to Asian dumplings, but have potato as the filling. Have you tried them before? First, the egg, salt, warm water, and flour are mixed and kneaded into a dough. The potatoes are boiled until tender, and chopped onion fried until golden brown. The two are mixed and seasoned with salt and pepper to create the filling. Lastly, the dough is turned into wrappers, which are then filled. After being boiled in salted water for two to three minutes, the dumplings are fried. Another of Oksana's signature dishes is chicken Kiev. What's so special about this dish named after Ukraine's capital? Our next dish will be chicken Kiev. So it's a stuffed chicken breast with the garlic and herb butter. So for this, we need some butter. Just uh, maybe slightly melted. Then we need some fresh dill to chop. And add also into the bowl. garlic. We grate one glove of garlic. Mm -hmm. 
And finally, we add some salt. So now it's time to mix it very well. After half an hour, we take our butter from the freezer and it's very easy to cut. So first we need to flatten up our chicken breast, just gently, the meat is very gentle. Then we just cut a piece of our butter and fill in the chicken. Now we need to just roll our chicken around the butter. Make it nice cutlet. So you need to chill this for 15 minutes so it's easy to cook and it's settled in the fridge. Well, the time is gone. We take our chicken from the fridge. So first we do the flour coating. Then the egg. And the breadcrumbs will be last. Our chicken is ready to fry. We're gonna fry our chicken to the golden brown color and then put in the oven for 11 minutes. It's very uh, traditional and I would say old uh, dish because it comes from the um, uh, historical era and then in 19th century it's been modified by Ukrainian chef. That's why the name of the dish is Chicken Kiev. You can taste chicken, it's very juicy and very flavorful and fresh. To the sisters, cooking is their happiest memory of family life. Whenever there's a festive celebration or family gathering, their household would prepare a feast together. Even the children would help wrap dumplings and mix salads. The sisters have been passionate about cooking since they were young. Older sister Oksana is more knowledgeable about mains, while younger sister Olena has a soft spot for desserts. It's no particular reason. I just like dessert, I think, a lot. and. Um... Oksana being the older sister, she cooks <laughs> more variety of food and I just do the sweet finish. So especially this honey cake is um, uh, 12 layers, as you see, and each layer we bake separately. And the honey comes through very strong and to cut down the sweetness, is, uh, you can see it's sour cream layers in between. So a combination of sweet and sour bring this unforgettable taste. This salad is herring under fur coat. Uh, the main ingredient is herring. Uh, the herring we import from Baltic states is slightly, slightly salted and marinated in uh, oil. Uh, and it's layered salad um, with the all roots vegetables, so it's potato, carrots, and beetroot. So the all layers we um, just spread with the uh, light mayo, and uh, between all these layers you can find the herring. So this is just we top up with the boiled eggs and it's really good combination of the salt, salty fish and uh, sweet root vegetables. It's very well, well balanced salad. This is actually number one salad because it's been amazing hit with the locals and we didn't have to change or adjust the 
flavors or anything. Yeah. They just really love it. And uh, they, when it's come, they always a wow effect. It looks like dessert. Mm -hmm. And we just have to remind them to eat all the layers at once, like a cake. So that will bring them all flavors at once you have to take. For the infused vodkas, uh, at the moment we have around 20 flavors. The different colors uh, just because we use different fruits. We didn't adjust actually, we just create new flavors. For example, lime in the ginger is being created just because of the local ingredients and we know people like something very fresh and they love ginger, of course, so we create this flavor. We also have pineapple and lime and passion fruit, which is, we didn't, we don't drink in, back in Ukraine, uh, which we recommend to drink with savory dishes, with main course or salads. And um, closer to dessert, um, we have some fruits, fruit-infused vodkas like passion fruit or sour cherry or cranberry. Um, or if you just full enough, you can just have it uh, like a digestive. Uh, we have many flavors such as like chocolate and caramel, uh, many different ones. Yes, so you can have them instead of dessert. Oksana and Olena have now been reunited with their parents in Hong Kong. They're even providing hands-on support to their daughter's food and beverage business. Olena sings praises of her mother, who once made 500 dumplings in a day, earning her the well-deserved title of the restaurant's Dumpling Queen. Initially, she was worried that they'd have difficulties adapting to life in Hong Kong. But seeing the whole family putting all their energy and passion into promoting Eastern European cuisine and Ukrainian culture here, has moved her beyond words. It was actually united for our family and it's actually brought us back together, more together, closer together. Our parents here, they moved here as well. And um, Elena's family, so we all like um, moved here and all together. I've been in Hong Kong 16 years, Aksana, a little bit less, and it's already like home.